This meeting is being recorded. Good morning. It's lovely to be in this chapel with you this morning in this time of Easter. So we begin our service on page five. Welcome to those online and those that will be catching us up later, having found us on the web somewhere. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come and worship the risen Lord. Bring your strengths and your weaknesses, your confidence and your uncertainty, your laughter and your tears, your hopes and your disappointments. Come alone and come together. For the risen Christ calls you to be his witnesses, his friends and his disciples. Let's proclaim together. Alleluia, we are your people. Alleluia, we are your church. Alleluia, risen Lord, we are your disciples. Amen. Let's sit to pray. We say it together. This Easter, we welcome you, Jesus, into our lives. We welcome your resurrection, for it is life changing, life giving, and life sustaining. We welcome the hope it brings to our world. We welcome the joy it brings to our darkness. We welcome the empty tomb. For we know that it means you are the risen one. Be with us now and give us hope, joy and your resurrected life. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. So let's call to mind all those missteps of the week, those things that we've said or thought or done, which separate us from each other and from God. By Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> and when we truly say we're sorry, God promises to forgive us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And I'll say the collect on behalf of us all. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. <laughs> Okay, we'll sit for our first reading. A reading from Revelation chapter 21. And in the spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city. For its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is in its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day. And there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter, will enter it. Nor anyone who practices abomination, abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing occurs to be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more light. They need no light or lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light. And they will reign forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's John chapter 5, starting at verse 1. <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Hear the gospel of our Lord Christ Jesus according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew, Beth, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man who was there, one man who there, 
uh, was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool where the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord 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 Lord. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our God, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> when Jesus talks to people, he doesn't beat about the bush. Questions are always to the point and direct. Do you love me? Why are you afraid? Are you also going to leave? How long shall I put up with you? Do you still not understand? And then there's this question, especially hard hitting. Do you want to be healed? Jesus is in Jerusalem near a pool by the sheep's gate. In the fire porticoes by the pool, the chronically sick and disabled of the city lie waiting. Rumour, legend or tradition has it that an angel visits the pool at random times, stirring up the water and giving it healing properties. The first person to step into the pool after the angel disturbs it receives healing. Of course, no one has ever seen anyone get healed, but everyone knows of someone who has. It's a place where those with no hope end up. In Greek culture, there was the cult of Aesculapius, the god of healing. And this was one of his pools, probably one of those um, pools, sulfur pools, where there's lots of minerals. The ill and the infirm would congregate to drink and bathe in the waters. And the rumour was that every so often, a skeletus would come and stir up the waters and you could be healed. The Jews changed a skeletus into an angel and hey presto, we're into the gospel reading. In our story, Jesus walking through finds a man lying by the pool who has been sick for 38 years and approaches him with a question. No introduction, no small talk, no sermon, just a question. Do you want to be made well? How would you feel if you had been unwell for nearly 40 years and a stranger came along one day and asked, do you really want to get better? implying maybe that your ongoing sickness was at least partially your fault. Implying maybe that you were benefiting consciously or unconsciously from remaining sick. Implying that somehow there was something invested in your brokenness, that you had stakes in it, that your identity was so wrapped up in your infirmity, your weakness or defeat that you couldn't possibly imagine your life without this illness. How would you feel? How would you respond? Would you hear insult in the question? Or would you hear an echo of the truth? The kind of truth maybe that hurts. In our society, there is a lot of victim blaming. How many of us have looked at someone and thought, why don't they dot, 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 get a job, get out of the house more, do a bit of exercise, lose some weight, dress appropriately? Yes. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> we all do it. We all do it. It's so much easier to do that than stand alongside someone and help them, really help them to healing and wholeness. Remember Boris Johnson criticising Justin Welby 
the daring to say that government policy to send some of our refugees to Rwanda, to Rwanda was subcontracting out of our responsibilities and was opposite to the nature of God. Remember just very recently, Lee Anderson, the Tory MP, saying that people who use food banks just need to learn to cook. Because when you blame a victim, it becomes that individual's responsibility rather than society's. I don't believe that Jesus is blaming the victim in this story. In all four gospels, Jesus has a deep compassion for the sick and the people with disabilities. Never once in scripture does Jesus respond to pain or illness with contempt, mockery or condescension. Not once does he tell a sick person that their illness is their own fault. In fact, he corrects that cultural misunderstanding that all Jews have that somehow disease and disability were a punishment for something that you had done or that your parents had done. When Jesus looks at this man who has been languishing by this pool for 38 years, he sees more than sickness. He sees defeat. He sees resignation. He sees psychological and spiritual stagnation. And he sees a man whose hope and whose world have got smaller and smaller and smaller. A man whose imagination had atrophied to such a point that he can't even articulate what he wants for his body, his soul and his future. How do we know that? Because a man doesn't answer Jesus's question, do you want to be made well? Instead, he turns it round and he answers a different question. He explains that the mechanics are sitting by the pool. I've got no one to put me into the pool. He makes a compelling case for the unfairness of the world. Because while I am making my way to the pool, someone else gets in before me. He invites pity. He hems and he oars and he dodges. In short, he avoids answering the question Jesus actually asks, which isn't a question about the man's circumstances, but a question about his heart, his identity and his desires. What do you want? The man has fallen into the trap of seeing himself as a victim. The man is living as if the only world was a world where someone would take him into the water. So I wonder, have you ever heard Jesus ask you this question? Do you want to be made well from all that prevents, hobbles, paralyzes and diminishes you? Do you want to stand up? Do you want to walk? Do you want to move? Have you ever said, yes, I want out, I want to be free, to be healed, and then the back of your mind I thought, well, I don't really. Because to be really free and healed would be far too scary. It's easier to stick with our brokenness because it's familiar. We've lived with it for a long time. It's easier to be a victim because that's what we've known all our lives. God cares about what we want. God's curious about our desires and wants us to recognise and articulate them. Isn't that incredible? That God who created the universe is interested in little old me. Jesus wants us to be made well and whole. He wants us to walk again, to thrive and to live. He wants to deliver us from the paralysis of the past, the baggage we carry, our fears of what we might be, our laziness to be just content with how life is, because that's what we know. Jesus wants us to want and to want it fiercely. He wants us to say yes when he asks that question, do you want to be made well? Yes, we do. Wouldn't it have been easy for Jesus to collude with this man? Jesus could have said, 
No problem. Shall I move you a bit closer to the pool? Shall I go and get you a sandwich and a drink? Instead, Jesus does something remarkable. He says, stand up, take out your mat and walk. And the man does exactly that. At once, John tells us, the man was made well. He took off his mat and began to walk. Jesus helps the man to see a different possibility. We don't know if there was a physical healing, but we do know that suddenly a world of possibility opens up to this man and he seizes it with both hands. One of the things you might want to think about is what's the healing that happened and which bit is the most important for you? The physical healing or the healing of hopes and dreams and possibilities? Because I think, do you want to be well implies more than just a physical healing. Did all those who witnessed this healing also have suddenly a world of possibility open up to them? Maybe there was more than just one healing that happened that day. Jesus is always and everywhere in the business of making new and making well. His desire is to heal us, and it's intrinsic to his character, and it doesn't actually depend on us. In other words, do you want to be made well? Is a question Jesus will never stop asking us, because his heart's desire is for our wholeness and our freedom and our thriving. And Jesus understands that there is power in just asking the question. Straight to the point, straight to our hearts. Do you want to be made well? Because it is when we answer that question truthfully that the real work of healing will begin. One of the loveliest things that Jesus offers us is life and life in all its fullness. So do you want to be made well? So as we ponder that question, let's stand to affirm our faith and we'll use the words on page 12. <laughs> because there are no questions in this statement. We say together, Christ, Christ died, died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Let's sit for our prayer. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Jesus Christ. Let's pray to God the Father. Dear God, you give us your peace and invite us to be untroubled and unafraid. But in our humanness, we are frail and we fail and we fear. So please help us to recognise our weaknesses, to 
overcome our disappointments, to learn from our mistakes, and to ask ourselves those difficult questions so that your peace becomes our peace and the life-giving force you intend it to be. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Dear God, we pray for the world. There are so many things which need your intervention and your guiding hand. And so we commit to you all those people and situations where there is aggression, discrimination, exclusion, and exploitation. We pray for the people of Ukraine, the injured, those in mourning, those without a home, those displaced in a foreign country. President Zelensky said that the war can only be resolved through diplomacy. And so we pray God for President Putin and for a breakthrough that will make peace possible. We pray for the people of Sri Lanka, for those without money for food or fuel, for those suffering in the power cuts, for those without medicine or access to healthcare. We pray for the new Prime Minister and for the government and we pray for help to come from other countries. We pray for the people of Latin America and especially for the thousands of homeless people of San Paolo who are dying on the streets from the cold. We pray that people will not walk by them. We pray they receive food, warm clothes and shelter. And we ask you, dear God, to uphold the churches and charities are doing all they can to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 We pray for those who serve others. We pray for our Queen and give thanks for her long reign. We ask that she may have good health. We pray for our Prime Minister and his government and ask that you grant them wisdom, concern for those on the margins of society, and the skill and will to change our country for the better. Pray for charities supporting the vulnerable in our society, and especially for those who use their services, the homeless, the addicted, the unemployed, the hungry, the indebted. We probably pray that all who need a home will have one. And that by your spirit, 
people who need to give up alcohol and drugs or gambling. You've been empowered to do so. I pray that those wanting to drink will find it. That the hungry will be welcomed at food banks. And those in debt will secure financial freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for the people of this country. As energy companies make vast profits, we pray for social justice. As schools and universities enter the exam period, we pray for peace, my own people. As the country moves on from COVID, we pray for healing for those working in the NHS. As inflation rises with the cost of living, we pray for people who face bills they cannot pay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for the people in our community. As you heal the man at the pool, please heal those who have asked for healing and homes. We pray for Philip, Brian, Jean. We pray for Isla and Maureen and Mary. We pray for Iris and Joan. And we pray for George and Katie. We pray for Terry and David and Margaret and Rita. We pray for Rosemary and for David and Margaret. We pray for Sue. We pray for Rosemary and Norma and baby Charlotte. And we pray for Peter and for Jane. May those names know your peace your love and your care and your people only. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Dear God, we pray for the family and friends of those who have died recently. Val, Margaret, Cecily, George, John, and Julie. And we pray for those whose years mind falls this month. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Hugh, St. John, and all your saints. We say together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you like to stand for the peace? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Everyone, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So we share the peace together.
Together we pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us a cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gates of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so far, we're calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of Hugh, John, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. We'd like to be seated, we pray together, as Jesus taught us, Whichever version you feel most comfortable. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. So together we pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fixed even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and meet in your kingdom. Show me the bread of heaven in Christ Jesus. Show me the glory that you are and all that you will give. Make the gifts and keep them. Amen. Amen. Together we pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection, has delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's some notices for all of us. Next Sunday at 10 o'clock, we're going to have some sort of praise at Catholic Church. 
So if you've got a favourite hymn or a favourite chorus or a favourite praise song that you'd like us to sing and you might be to say why it's your favourite, then let me know and we'll see if we can include it. And then the Sunday after that, at the time of service, we're going to be outside and out, um, and then we're going to have a picnic to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. So if you can come to that, that'd be great. And if, um, there'll be a sign-up list for food. So um, it's all in your notices, but um, just to bring you a of those things. A blessing for all of us. May God, our Creator, who danced at the dawning of creation, be with us. May God, our Redeemer, who challenges us to dance the pain of the world's suffering, be with us. May God, who gives us life and who invites us to join in the dance of celebration, be with us. In the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, our Redeemer, and the one who will give us life again, be with us and remain with us now and always. Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.